So welcome everybody to Divi Toronto. We are also doing a joint Divi uh, meetup with Divi San Antonio. So some of you may be joining us from there as well. And I know PK did put um, a notice out on his email blast. So if you're coming here just from that, we are very excited to have you. We are going to go around the room. I'll make it super quick. If you just tell me your name and where you're from, so maybe city and uh, country, and whether or not you are a Divi user. So I'll go ahead and start. I am the meetup host. Uh, my name is Susie, and I'm in Mississauga, Ontario, about 20 minutes from Toronto. So I'm just going to go ahead and go around the room. Sorry, PK, you're going to be last. Uh, but I will announce you, and then you guys can um, go ahead and take over. So the first person on my screen, I have a Michael Southern. If you want to go ahead and tell us where you're from. Oh, you're going to take yourself off mute there. How's that? Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm Michael Southern. Uh, yes, I use Divi, uh, just getting into it. And uh, I'm from uh, Richmond Hill, Ontario. Welcome. So you're one of my locals. Yep. Okay, uh, Roddy. Hey, <clears throat> my name is Roddy. I am from Scotland, but I am currently in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Wonderful. Well, welcome. And I have, I'm not sure here, new user. <laughs> oh, you're just on mute there. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yeah, it's Sophia. Sophia? Yeah, Sophia. And I'm from, uh, yeah, I'm from Toronto, right yeah. next to you. <laughs> Wonderful. Hello, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've been using Divi for the last, uh, I guess, year, year and a half, and I'm really getting into it, especially the uh, customization and the CSS. Yeah. Wonderful. Welcome. All right, we'll take it over to Chris. My name is Chris Potter. I'm from a little town called Barrington, Illinois, just northwest of Chicago, and I've been a lifetime subscriber to Elegant Theme since about 2009. Wow. Wow. Wonderful. All right. Brett. Hello, Brett. I'm in Denver, Colorado, and I'm not exactly new to Divi, but I haven't really done much website building with it. So I watch plenty of tutorials and learn stuff, but I haven't implemented much. So it's always good to, to be in these classes and learn a little bit more, you know, tricks in, of the trade. So Wonderful. thank you for putting it on. Perfect. Thank you. All right, Michelle. Good morning, Susie and everyone else. Um, I'm from Sydney, Australia, and um, I've been using Divi a couple of years. Um, my CSS skills are very limited, and um, I find that I have no real um, process for it. It's sort of hit and miss and copy and paste, and some things work and sometimes some things just totally frustrate me. So I'm excited about today's lesson. <laughs> Wonderful. And, um, yeah, especially when I had to start using snippets in WooCommerce, that was just beyond. <laughs> <laughs> Lots, Lots to learn. learn. Lots Thank to you. Learn. Thank you. All right, John. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, I'm John from uh, Caves Beach, uh, which is uh, part of uh, close to Sydney. <laughs> uh, I've been working with Divi for a couple of years. Uh, and I think I know a bit about it. Uh, I'm just here to learn more. Awesome. Welcome. All right, Robin. Hi, Susie. Um, yes, my name is Robin. I am from the Toronto West End. And if you can make it from Mississauga to Toronto in 20 minutes, you must be flying. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm looking forward to the uh, home inspector um, uh, material and uh, I am not a Divi user. All right. Okay, I've got uh, Carl. If you want to unmute. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, I'm Carl. Actually, I'm going to see if I can turn on my video here. Okay, got it. Um, okay. Hi, I'm Carl. Um, I have been using Divi for about five years and uh, originally to develop websites that I was working on for myself and 
it just sort of grew from there. I've had, I have a lot of uh, clients now or people that approach me to help me develop their websites. Um, uh, the CSS part's always been a bit of a challenge. I, I mean, I, it works, but I'm not, sometimes I'm sort of going through the motions without really knowing how, why it works. And so I'm, I'm really curious to, to go deeper into that. Awesome. All right, I got time for just a couple more before I turn it over here. So let me see, I've got Eagle, if Eagle wants to tell us name and where you're from. Yeah, I'm uh, Eagle in Santa Cruz, California, a WordPress organizer. Uh, uh, I am a lifetime member of the, the Divi theme, but I don't really develop with it, but I do support it. I have a I do tech support for a number of developers as well as for clients. So I do support Divi and work with it. So I'm fairly familiar with it. Challenging myself mostly right now with trying to build sites with the, the block editor, which is quite frustrating. But uh, well, always good to learn. Yes. Wonderful. All right, Sue. Hi, I am here in Corvallis, Oregon. I have developed in the past in Divi. I have one client that's still using Divi. So yeah, I'm familiar with it. Awesome. And Marissa. Sorry guys. Hi, I'm Marissa. Um, not really in Barrie, Ontario, but that's where our web agency is. I'm just north of Toronto, New Market. Um, I've been using Divi for probably five years now, and I'm just happy that this group is back up. I think I recognize Michelle from Divi San Antonio. I was joining some of their meetups. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right, moving on, uh, Colin. Uh, I am from Mississauga, and this is my first time using, uh, 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 I have never used Divi, so I'm just here to find out more about Divi and more about uh, WordPress in general. Awesome. Welcome. Elon. Hey, Elon in uh, McKinney, Texas, which is just north of Dallas, uh, WordPress since 2008, and Divi since uh, Black Friday of 2016, and most recently writing uh, layouts using CSS Grid. So interested in that's performance. Awesome, welcome, Eric. Hi, Eric. I'm in uh, Mountain View, California. I've been working with Divi about uh, four years or so. I do freelance um, websites. Wonderful. Welcome. And we'll do my last one. Nobody panic. You want to come off mute? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave. I'm from uh, Chicago. Uh, I've been using Divi for, uh, it's been probably four or five years. Um, I'm a freelance graphic designer. Web designer. Awesome. All right. Welcome, everybody. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn this over to PK. PK, if you can tell us where you're from. I know probably the majority of the people are familiar with you, with um almost inevitable, but um, go ahead, tell us where you're from, and then I'll let you just take over the presentation. And at the end, uh, we'll do a little Q&A um, once you're finished and uh, wrap up. So I'll turn it over to you. All right, cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is PK. That's just three letters, P for phone, K for knowledge. That's how I always introduce myself. Um, it's a spelling and a math joke. Uh, anyways, so um, I am, I've been, I'll follow the format. Uh, I've been using Divi since, who was it? Someone said 2009, around then. Yeah, same for me. Um, with Elegant Themes, when they were um, releasing a theme a month, I was on board. And then um, one month, they just skipped that theme, uh, that month. And then that happened for a few more months, they came out with Divi. And I was like, oh, cool. So I started using it since then. Um, been with, been using it as my main uh, theme for all the way from 1.0 all the way to 4, Divi 4. And then I released, um, I wrote uh so I wrote, uh, what is it? 
uh, review of Divi uh, on my website, which is almost inevitable. It's changed quite a bit now. But um, after that, I, I didn't like four. And then um, that was my first YouTube video that got a dislike. So anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, that, that happened. And then um, uh, I've been sort of on and off for a while, uh, but I'm really looking forward to Divi four and um, how it's all changing the whole platform. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, I, I had a look at the preview, uh, the, the, as it alpha, I think they had developers alpha or something and, um, very similar, nothing new, but it does work a little better. So sounds exciting. Um, anyways, um, I have a lot of CSS courses here and I work with, and I develop mainly in, um, CSS, PHP, JavaScript and all that. Uh, WordPress themes are sort of like an easy uh, way to make layouts and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's that's where Divi comes in. That that's where Divi used to come in. Um, and this is the website that I built with uh, with the designer at that time. I used to work here um, until I didn't for a lot of reasons. Um, so that's why I'm not visiting the site, but, um, and I, I, I don't want you guys to visit it, give them traffic anyway, uh, but anyways, uh, I built this one. So this is, um, here, um, this is my current website. It's also built in Divi. I just wanted to have something, um, just to show that, you know, I still use and I'm comfortable with Divi. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun website that you can check out, um, just for fun, because it's just, yeah. Anyways, oh, this is the designer that I work with to make this site. That's not important, but just showing you stuff. All right, so um, that's my website, just have a look. It's just fun. And if I click away, you can see that it says over here. So yeah, that's a little JavaScript snippet that I put in there. So yeah, see that changes. <laughs> Anyways, I was, I was so proud that I found that. Anyways, um, so this is another site that I did. This is all built in Divi. And um, it's, oh, that was slow. Anyways, it's um, a lot of CSS. So as you can see, it doesn't look like a regular Divi site. It doesn't look like default Divi blocks or anything. It's, um, it's because it's all done in CSS, which is why uh, CSS is so um, useful and powerful. So yeah. I think I think these guys don't have yeah they they got rid of that custom post type that I built for them but that's not important anymore uh, so yeah um, let's get into this so um, the original idea about this was that um, we are going to look into using the inspector and as as you can see as you can probably see I'm not using Chrome right. Uh, Chrome is I can I can swap over to share something share the share Chrome but Chrome is and I'm sure you're all uh, you're all familiar with Chrome but I use Firefox and let me just skip over to Chrome for a quick second um, all right so I I don't use like full on Chrome Chrome I use a form of Chromium which is Brave because it blocks all the ads. Uh, because A, I don't like ads too much, and B, because um, it, it sort of there's a, there's way too much stuff going on that it sort of ruins the development um, focus for me. So that's yeah. Um, but yeah, the reason why I don't use Chrome, I'll get into later. But um, for now, uh, we'll just we can start with um, the inspector here. Um, and it's, it's Chrome, Firefox is easier to add your own whole, whole, uh, style sheets and style things and, uh, test and preview before you even put it into, uh, the website. But anyways, um, I can, I can go into, um, introducing, not introducing, walking you through how the basics of CSS and then getting into, um, how to utilize that knowledge and, 
um, use it on your um, development sites, but I can do it either in this one of my websites and just show you and I stuff and and you know change things and stuff, or I can use one of the front ends of what the websites that any of you built. If you have a website that you want, don't, I won't, I'm not going to criticize anything. So um, if you have a website that you have that you really want to change, like some little detail about it that you want to change and you want me to go through live, hope I don't embarrass myself. But um, if you have anything like that, then um, please drop it in the chat and I'll do it right now. Otherwise, I'll just show you how things work um, here. I'll just give you a minute for you to come up with that. Waiting in the chat. Yeah. Too scary yeah. for anybody to share anything or? Oh. No? Okay. Just, oh, that's great. All right, the first one to jump in is John. So I'll go there and then I'll take this one as well. Caesar Doc. Yeah. All right, I'll take this as well. Got two. All right, I'm gonna jump over to Firefox because that's my default browser. All right. Um, so this is the site that John put up in the chat. Um, is which part would you like me to look at? I think you got to share the other screen. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> did I share? What did I share? I'm seeing a whole bunch of your calendar, bunch of. Oh, different... okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry. There we go. No, not that. <laughs> That's my schedule. Uh, the joy of multiple windows. <laughs> oh yeah, you have no idea. I have, <laughs> I have eleven desktops that I swipe through, and dozens and dozens of uh, windows. All right, here we are. So this is, this one has the green outline. All right. Um, got any um, any part that you want us to look at, John? Not necessarily. Just uh, for you to have a look at and make any suggestions that would make it better uh, yeah or yeah. improve the speed or whatever okay cool sure um oh by the way uh i am i live in australia and you can tell from the accent i did not grow up here i grew up in the u.s uh actually um texas so san antonio and stuff i i grew up in lubbock texas but um and then I lost the draw when I went up to um, Indiana and Ohio, but um, I, I lived, I, I've lived here in Australia for past almost decade. So, uh, yeah. I lived Anyways. here for a while as well, but I'm, I wasn't born here, as you can tell from my accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah where, where are you? I'm in uh, Caves Beach. Uh, you know where Newcastle is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, cool. Uh, I, I live it's in... like Macquarie. Uh, like McCoy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I live in Sunshine Coast. If you know that, oh, where that is. Miles away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um kilometers away. Uh all right. I have a lot of jokes for myself. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's have a look. All right. Um, so just a general um introduction into the inspector. Uh, you can, first off, you start with by just clicking on something and just going into inspect and it'll show you this. Now, there's a few different ways that you can view this. I always have it in a separate window because I want to see more things, but presenting this, I have a, I have two 4K screens, so I can't just share the whole screen because you can't read anything. So that's why I have it docked to the bottom, but normally I wouldn't do this because it I feel claustrophobic. I, I like having lots of screens and lots of pixels. Um, all right, so which, whatever you're clicking on, and you can see that it's highlighting things, right? Whatever that does, um, 
if you click on it and and if you don't see this third uh, panel, their third column, it's because of this. Now this is in um, Firefox. Chrome also has this three column layout. So it's pretty much the exact same thing. Um, I'm using Firefox because um, of this, the style editor, you can actually add CSS directly here and you can see what it will look like on the website directly. Chrome does not do this as well, which is why I use Firefox. Um, and once you're, once you're happy with whatever you have, and, and if you refresh, this will go away. So you need to be writing it on a separate text editor while you're doing this. But um, if you like what you're seeing, then you can copy that and drop it into the Divi um, uh, theme options for the CSS, custom CSS field, and then it will apply, right? So um, it's, it's a good testing ground and I like having this freedom here. So uh, this is why everything is in, I like doing things in Firefox. So if you click on what in JavaScript is called a DOM, but in HTML, it's just a element or basically a div that opens and closes a, a bracket. So it's div class et blurb content. Then you can see up here that it gets highlighted. And these colors here show you which is which. So this guy, the, the New Zealand uh, blurb block, uh, blurb content block has um, some margins as you can see with the yellow green here. And this guy, as you can see with the purple, and the yellow green on the sides that also has uh, padding and then margins. Now the colors are a little different between Chrome and Firefox. So um, it, it could be jarring if you're used to the inspector in Chrome, it might look a little different, but um, it's just basically um, the same thing and just it's color coded here. And also uh, one very important thing in CSS that you will later you know, sort of get used to is um, the box, the box model, which is um, the content, and then coming out from the content is padding, border, and then margin. And understanding the difference between these three is very important, and we'll get to that later. Um, so this is what that is, uh, and this is how you highlight it, and so you know what's going on here. And this column shows the whole um, cascade. So CSS is cascading style sheets, and it's based off of what is called specificity. And anything that is more specific to that element, to this, this piece of HTML here, will be shown on the front end first. And then it has like, for example, we can, you can see there's one rule. This is a rule. This one line is called a rule. And you can see that this rule is overruled uh, by um, the one that is on the bottom of the cascade. So this is from bottom up because this guy is not specific enough to be applied, all right? It looks, it is the same thing as you can see margin bottom is zero, but from the, from the browser's perspective, this guy here, this rule here is not specific enough to be applied. It's not this one that is doing the margin bottom. It's this one that is doing it. And if you can see here that these, it's a little hard to, it might be a little hard to see in the shared screen um, through the, through your, through Zoom, but the, there's one part between the commas, there's one section here that is a little lighter than the other ones. So you can see ETPB section, div, ETPB row, column, module, last child. This guy is a little lighter than these other um, selectors. And that is which, that is the selector that is being used, all right? That's the one that is being applied, okay? Um, so here there's no, there's no question which one it is, but if it's up here then it's a little harder to see, but it's still the lightest colored one here and the other darker gray ones are not the ones that are being applied. So um, if you need to just isolate this one person, this not person, this one element, then you don't need to copy all of that unless you want it applied globally. If you want it just on this one, then the lightest colored one, the one that is sort of highlighted is where you should be starting. Um, we, will, we will add more to it to get more specific, but that's, that's where you start. Um, and this, Everything's being ignored down the cascade. So here there's a margin bottom 9.27%. 
which was supposed to be applied, but this guy overruled it. So it's not being applied uh, with 140% and um, all this kind of stuff. We'll get to important later once we learn um, specificity. And you see all this all the way down to the basic, um, what is it, uh, normalization, which is just setting things up so it'll all look the same in every browser. So that's what that's called. You just um, uh, clean everything up so it'll all have the same um, uh, behavior. And you go all the way down here and that's it. So now these guys are what is called custom properties. The In each rule, the left side is the property and the right side is the value. And these, as you can see, it's not anything like box sizing. It's actually double hyphen and then you write whatever here. So these are custom properties and you can refer them later as a, in the value side and they're called CSS variables. Um, they're technically called CSS custom properties but we normally call them variables uh, because they go inside of VAR. And you go all the way down, keep going down and then you see more of that stuff. So what a lot of modern themes do because um, custom properties work in all modern browsers, it does not work in Internet Explorer 11, uh, but Internet Explorer 11 has finally gone below any significant number of users. So I don't use it anymore. I don't develop for it anymore. A uh, few years, even a few years ago, I did because um, like corporate IT companies, not companies, corporate I, corporate corporate IT departments um, usually say around, what is it? A percentage or half a percentage of users should be supported. So I had to support Internet, in a, Internet Explorer 11 up to even like three years ago. So um, people who are really gung-ho and really like, you know, about Internet Explorer 11, like, oh, Microsoft killed it. Like nobody cares. People use it. It's going to have to be supported. We, we, ha we have to follow the people, not, you know. So that is one reason why I try, I try to develop for all browsers. But now it's gotten to a point where IE 11 is pretty much dead, even with all the users. So custom properties are great. So you can define it, and then you can use it later anywhere in the, on the website. And then all you need to do is just change this value for this custom property and it will work on throughout the whole website if it's re referred anywhere. So this is how the whole cascade works. You set, you set some custom properties and then you refer it later on. Uh, you, you normalize it and then you can build off of that and then you go into being more specific. So that's how, that, that's how you read all this. Um, another thing that will probably help is you can get what the padding border and margin um, is. You can see these numbers here. So they show you exactly what that is. Um, and you'll see box sizing a lot. That means that the border is the size of the box. And if you add anything inside, which is padding, then things will scrunch in, not push the border out. Um, so that's how everything is set. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, so this is, is pretty much what you see for this box. Um, but if you don't know exactly, for example, what the font sizing is inside this box, you go here and you get the whole list of everything that is applied. So this is everything on this box that will show on the front end. And you can see the whole list. And then once you open this up like that, you actually get the cascade of everything and where it is. So like this, the color, color is the font color. So the color, if you want to see where that is coming from, you can see that this comes from uh, ET Core Unified, which is what Divi does to combine all the CSS it has. And then it serves one uh, minified CSS file. And that's where that is. So that means you can't go to, you can't go somewhere to change it. It actually is in, either in a setting somewhere, most likely. Um, yeah. And it, it could have come, it could have been a blue color from the body but that has been overruled by this guy. So that's why you can see the whole cascade. And this is very useful uh, because you will be able to sort of isolate or find 
where each rule is being applied from. So, um, and sometimes font size, for example, is important because you can see that's 16. It's six, it is 16, it's 16 is what you see on the front end, but it actually comes from body 100%. 16 pixels is the size of a root M and the default root M and the 100% means it is at uh, 16. So you can change this 100% to 125, you get 18, for example, and um, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see that no font size is being applied to this, this block itself directly. So um, that means that this is a good chance that you can actually add font size to it and everything underneath it will be um, inherited, will inherit that if, you, if it needs to, or it also can mean that you are free to go in and change these guys and there will not be much that affects it. Okay, so this can help you understand where things are and where it's coming from. APK? Hey, um, yep. Real quick, <clears throat> how did you get the third column in your inspector? Um, let's go to, are you on Firefox or are you checking yeah, from yeah, Chrome? Yeah, I'm looking at it in Firefox, but I only have, I mean, I'm following you lick per lick here, but I don't, I'm yeah. just curious as how, how did you get the, the third column is definitely useful, especially when you go and hover over a flex box and it, it flips the flex, it was automatically flipped. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, because like, Flexbox oh, has a awesome. little thing. <laughs> yeah, so this thing here, you see that? Oh, well, that was just too simple, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. And another thing that um, is really good is, and this is also in Chrome as well, in the settings, you can find disable HTTP cache. So that means whenever you're developing, it won't load the cache. So you keep this open, keep the inspector open, and you won't have problems with cache because almost any problem that comes up in any Divi group or any development group, the first thing to check is, did you flush the cache? And if you have the inspector open, if you have this checked, then you won't be dealing with the cache. You'll be dealing with what is loaded directly. So hope that this is a, this is a really, Useful that tool. is gold. That is gold. Yeah, yeah I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? Um, and there are a few a few other things that really do help that I'm pretty sure I can. Um, hey, PK, where where did you turn off that caching? Um, so you go here to settings. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And I think there's another part where you can turn things on. So yeah, the toolbox buttons. I have everything on. So. And this is also, there's a few things in Firefox that Chrome doesn't have in this case, but um, I'll just I'll just show you how cool this is. Um, you can actually, oh, sorry. You can actually, um, use the eyedrop and then you can pick up a color directly, right? And you can also measure things directly. So you can get the size of things like that. Or you can toggle the rulers. And you can also get screenshots directly. So um, yeah, the, the inspector has a lot of really cool stuff that is that a lot of people think like when I'm in the groups and people ask questions like this, I'm like, it's all in the inspector for a lot of things. People are like, oh, let's add an extra plugin. Like you don't need to, you can just use that for a lot of things. So yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the inspector. Does anybody have any questions before I go on to CSS? Or do I have to look at the chat? Oh, I have, there's a lot of things in the chat. Sorry, yeah. All right, I need to keep that open. Um, separate text editor. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a second when we talk about CSS. Um, Third inspector, yeah, we just did that. Same in Chrome, pretty much. Um, the lightest color, oh yeah, that that does work. That worked the same in Chrome. So I'll I'll show you that in a second. I'll show you that now. I guess why 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 wait a second? Um, sorry, I keep jumping back and forth, but um, it's because you know. <laughs> 
So yeah, you can see here, this is the, all this stuff here is gray, but that div is the only one that's light, as you can see. So that's the one that is being applied, right? Yeah. And it has pretty much everything here as well. It has all that, you can open it up, do the same thing, see where it's coming from. Um, the, the third column opener is over here. You see? And it also has the disable cache here. All right? Yeah, so um, the Chrome inspector is also very good, uh, very helpful, but I tend to find the Firefox one uh, a little more helpful and useful. Um, yeah, okay, let's um, so let me chat, go through the question. Um, CSS Chrome extension, need it? No. Oh yeah, this is just um, this is just a topic for today. Um, yeah, 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 like Susie said. Yeah. Um, when I, when I mean lighter, I mean, um, I don't know. It probably, it is probably the, the stronger color, not necessarily in a heavier weight as in bold, but um, because uh, I use dark mode for everything. Um, it's the white text as opposed to the gray. But if it's if you're in light mode, then you would probably have the black text as opposed to the gray. So um, that's I hope that makes sense. Uh, okay, so let's um let's, let's talk about some CSS. Maybe we can do it here. Um, new user. Sophia, yeah, that's me. Oh, oh yeah. Hello. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, anything you want to, you want to, you want me to yeah, talk um, about? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Specifically, I have, I have, um, I didn't create this site, but I've been managing mm -hmm. for a doctor um, for like the last two years. And mm -hmm. he just recently he wanted me to um, edit this widget. It's on every page. Um, uh, the sidebar widget on every page, except for the um, home and contact page. Yep. And it's just, um, I just noticed since I uh, edited it, it's um, flickering on every page. So if you go about on the, on the um, drop down menu, there's another tab there. Yeah. So the sidebar, it, it says um, location on the top. It just jumps a little bit from page to page. It's the same location in every, on every page, but every time you jump from each page, it, you, it jumps a bit at the top. Oh. I don't know if you uh, can if you can see that. I don't know if you could see that in your view, because it's right at the top. You're talking about this widget, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look. And and I just noticed. Um, I did some research today, and um, some I was looking at some Divi tutorials actually, and they were saying when you have the widget, it's either controlled by the Divi module widget, the sidebar widget, or it's mm -hmm. control, or it's controlled by the um, WordPress widget, right? And yeah. it's, it seems to me this one here is controlled by both. So the content, all the uh, the text and everything, is in the uh, Divi, um, the WordPress widget. But mm -hmm. if you want to change like the uh, font size or the color, it's yep. controlled. It's controlled by the uh, a sidebar, the sidebar which uh, module in uh, Divi. So I don't know if that's proper or if that's a it sounds like uh if that's a you know good uh design or web design it doesn't seem like it's a good design to have both of them together like that oh it's definitely better to have it in one place right yeah so. yeah so i don't so i'm just thinking about like i don't know if i'm gonna try and recreate it but if you if you if you even if you I can fix it because it seems like such a minor thing it just jumps and it's in the same location everywhere. It's also, it's in, uh, what do you call it? Dynamic, it's in the library. So it's re recreated 
it only once and then it's just dropped it's, in there. It's a global, it's a green yeah. one. No, it's a, not, and it's not global, it's uh, oh. dynamic. That one is global, yeah, sorry. That one is global, yeah. I was trying to fix it, but it doesn't make a difference whether it's global or dynamic. It's still jumping and I don't know. It seems like there's not enough room there. And I tried to increase the space, the margins, the padding, and it still seems like there's not enough space when it goes in there. Right. Um... Yeah, well, this is this this is more about um, the back end and how it's built in Divi and mm -hmm. CSS. But um, we'll is it who is it? Sophie? Yeah, Sophia. Sorry, yeah, Sophia. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I I can help you with this, but um, we'll have to revisit this because it's not sure. necessarily about CSS at the moment. Is that okay. okay? Yeah, sure. It's just um, I was thinking maybe increasing the margin, making it giving it more space. Because that's, oh, yeah. like, I don't know if that's, that's why I say it with CSS, because um, I was like, I said, just watching some research today and you can customize the um, the widgets, right? You just put the text and you can also have customized C um, HTML also, right? In the, uh, in the widget. So that's for WordPress, on the WordPress side. But for the Divi side, it's like, uh, it's, uh, um, you can't uh, do anything like just the, um, because at the bottom there, he has this uh, WordPress feed for his social social media, um, the the Twitter feed, and that's only yeah. included in that's only included in WordPress. I um, and I wouldn't know. Like I, I tried to figure out how can you include that, like even in a sidebar, that feed. It's specifically in WordPress. Hey Sophia, are you building that in the old widget, you know, uh, appearance widgets, the old version or the new block builder version? I think it's the block version. Yeah. Yeah, go try building it in the old version. Okay, so I have to see, see if it works better. Okay. Just a suggestion. Okay. But yeah. I you know I don't like the new the whole new block builder widget thingy. It's not my I, I don't dig it at all. Yeah, yeah. There's a plugin that will uh, undo that and then go back to the old version. What and is then it? You'll get your you'll get yeah. your widget back. Um, uh, old widget WordPress something like that. <laughs> Okay. 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 I'll do it. Yeah. It's 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 right it's right next to the classic builder. It's like one of the most one of the two most yeah popular classic widgets. widgets. <laughs> yeah, because I think it was created in the classic widget, and it seemed like I couldn't uh, like I said I tried to edit it, so I think I upgraded it, changed it back to the newer one to an upgrade um updated it, and yeah. um, but it still didn't make a difference. <laughs> it still didn't make a difference. yeah. That, that's that's why I thought about it because somewhere along what WordPress five or six when they came out with uh, Gutenberg and all that and then the widgets changed it messed up all I mean I maintained like thirty two Divi sites and it messed up a whole bunch of widgets for me and it mm -hmm. took it took a few minutes to figure it out. Okay, that's good to know. I'll try that then. Yeah. Try, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, and and feel free to contact me at any time if you want to sort this out. I'll I can help you with that. It's, oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was just going to say this. This isn't an uncommon problem as far as certain elements shifting like this. I it was brought up in another different group we talked a while back where there are certain elements that no matter what you seem to do, it's it's like it's loading. A portion of the CSS or you know later, so it it's causing the shift, um, and we couldn't figure it out then. I haven't had a chance to look back at it, but I've seen that shift happen in certain elements within Divi before, um, you know, and and I, I haven't been able to figure out exactly what it is either. If you figure it out, I'd love to hear what's going um, on. So. When you mean things shifting on load, do you mean that it's unstyled and then it falls into the right place later? That's well, that's when we looked at that side widget there, the location one. When the when the yeah. page renders it, it's sitting where it's it's like it's not it's not applying the top padding right away. Then it as the page renders, it recognizes or loads that CSS and then it shifts. Is what it's right. doing. And which is a little strange. It depends where that style sheet is being loaded, maybe 
but considering even if it, it I, I've seen it elsewhere within Divi where sometimes some elements have this slight shift like that. And it looks like it is pulling a, a style and the, the padding, whatever it is to uh, the column signal, uh, single has a padding of, I don't know, whatever this is, you know, certain two point whatever percent. And that's the seemingly amount of shift that it's adding to it every time it loads late on that uh, widget. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you would read the uh, uh, message I just put into chat, I, yeah, I, I was going to just say that Robin here said something is saying something about network. The, the yeah, waterfall. but this is, um, I think, referred to as layout shift. And it happens to be quite important from an SEO point of view because there's a performance metric called cumulative layout shift. And Google yeah. penalizes um, a page um, depending on the sort of cumulative count of layout shifts because it recognizes that layout shifts are bothersome to users. And so there seems to be a fair amount of technical material on addressing it, which is brand new to me just in the last 24 hours. So. Yeah. I offer yes. that up as um, as um, um, this usual question of until you get sort of the right term for what you're trying to diagnose, it's hard to find anything relevant online. And so, oh, if, yeah, definitely. If you search for layout shift or cumulative layout shift, you'll see a whole passel of resources about how to identify it and address it. But I think that for our purposes right here, this one particular article says, as I wrote in the chat, um, go to the experience heading under under performance metrics or use dev, the DevTools network throttling feature. Uh, and in the first case, you'll get details. And in the second case, you'll be able to view it. And I've done neither of these. And so if you know where these things are, <laughs> turn, it, yeah, over, turn yeah. it back to you. Yeah, yeah sure. So um, is, it, is it Robin? Was it, yes. Is that you? Yeah. yeah. So what Robin is saying um, is the uh, CLS. It's what when you put a website through uh, GT Metrics, it's easy to see what's happening on GT Metrics. So let's just put something safe in there. So the third, the last column, the last uh, cell in the table of the metrics that comes back from G, uh, GT is CLS, cumulative layout shift. It's a, it's a mouthful. Um, what it is, is when the site loads, it's how when the images and the text that loads and then the CSS starts changing things too much. Also JavaScript changes things as well. And when that happens, ah, oh, I, I can't curse, but oh, look at that, zero. You see that? Yeah. So sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Um, what what it is is when the CSS loads, so it will wait like a split second for this for the initial CSS to load. But then when you start overwriting things again and again, and then have more files loading later, then it starts changing things. And then like when you're on a when you go to a page, you want to click on something, and you're about to click on something, but it just moves, and then you click on something else, or your mouse is not at the place where you want it to be. And it's very annoying. And that is um, what you get when you have a high CLS. So um, it is, I think it was still Robin. Yeah. So he mentioned SEO, which is um, which does affect SEO in terms of not necessarily with site speed, but all of that becomes part of the site experience. And if people are annoyed by your website, then they will go away. And that means that it has very low retention, which means from Google's perspective that your site sucks. So it's not gonna suggest it as much. And that's, that's what can happen if your site moves around too much. Um, we can talk about that, but that is a whole site optimization thing. So um, I really wanna get into explaining some basics of writing CSS. So we'll get to that after this, okay? Is that, is that okay with everyone? Oh yeah, you're on mute. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll just do that. <laughs> because uh, basically it's loading in a very optimized way. And Divi has changed that a lot recently. So um, you 
there's a couple settings in Divi that will allow that, and it it drops the CLS to like near zero uh, if you optimize if you click on the optimizations. But um, it will cause problems if you have some legacy um, stuff and legacy plugins or anything that is not on board as or has not been optimized for Divi, and then things just clash, and then you get problems with the cascade and things loading. And then it just, it can break things if Divi is optimized too much. Um, but it, it, if you if you navigate that a little well in term in using Divi settings a little better, then it will, it will really help. And Divi has its own settings to drop the CLS to uh, zero pretty much. So um, we can talk more about that later. Uh, for now, uh, let's just keep going on with um, CSS because we need to talk about specificity, which is really important. It's, it's so important. So, and we're almost done with time. So it's, it's, this is an, it's supposed to be an hour, right? But so I'll, I'll go over that really quick. Okay. Um, so in terms of just specificity, there are um, five, five layers, five, la not five layers, five levels of specificity. If you try to target an element, for example, this is a div, right? So if you try to target this by writing div, Okay, so for example, if we say um, div like that, then it's not going to work because this is the lowest level, right? So that's element level. And then after that, you can go into class, which is done with a dot. Now you add it into the, you add it into the HTML inside the class um, quotation marks. But um, in Divi, you go to the custom, in the module, you go to custom CSS, and then you can add a class. There are two uh, fields, one for ID and one for class. You can add that into the class. And if you add, for example, um, custom class, then this is higher specificity, right? And then after that, what is higher is the ID. And then you get, I wrote DI. Uh, and then you get something that will override anything that's done in the class, okay? So if you want something that will nuke all the classes, for example, you can see here, everything is written with, everything starts with a dot and there, there are no hashtags or pound signs or octothorps um, here, then that means everything is done in classes. And you can see that it has, there's div.etpb row. So that means that element and class, um, that's important because no matter how many classes you put together, it will never override an ID. So if you want something that is really, really strong, you use an ID. Okay. So you put an ID into a section, for example, which is great because you can actually have, um, anchor tags that will scroll to that section if you need it to. And you can also use that doubly as a really strong way of styling that section because, Nothing anybody does with classes in there will override the ID. Now, online, sometimes some you see people explaining things using um, uh, parentheses and putting them in something like this. So something like that. So you, they, you see, you might see this. And if, and if you started learning CSS, then this is one of the first things that you'll see. And this is how things are overridden. So that's element, class, ID, and then inline and important. But this is a little misleading because it looks like a decimal system. It is not. And I've seen people actually think and say and teach other people saying this, but it is not. 10 classes cannot override one ID. 100 classes cannot override one ID. One ID will nuke everything that the classes have tried to do. Okay. So if you have an ID for this section, let's uh, let's have a look if it had anything. Um, probably, but yeah. So there's nothing. There's nothing in the footer here. It's all classes, um, but you do have et main area, which is an ID. So if you use et main area when you're styling things, then it will override anything else that the um, site has been doing. So that is one of the things that. Um, can cause problems and has caused problems in the past because of importance and use of IDs when Divi changed its CSS 
uh, structure to be less specific because people had to fight that. And then that caused a lot of problems when DB updated once like a few years ago. Um, and then after that is inline. So you have elements, class, and inline. Inline is anything that is written directly inside here. So you can actually write uh, style equals, and then for example, color red, and that will be stronger when if, if it affects <clears throat> the thing directly. Like if you do that in a uh, paragraph, for example, then this will um, affect this directly and like this, right? You don't need, all right, so who, who, did, who put, all right, so if you, after inline, the stronger one is important and important is, as, and as you know, as I just explained, any level of specificity as you go up will never override the one above it. So no matter how many of the one that you use in that level, anything that is above it will always beat that. And that means that if you have an important somewhere, then the only way to beat that important is to have another important with some uh, specificity that is stronger. And this is an inline important, which means that you're never going to be able to change this unless you change it with JavaScript and go in and change this inline important thing. There's no way that you're going to be able to change the color of this span. Um, so that is what important does. It nukes everything, which can be good um, if you need to fight some plugin that does something or um, if you see somebody write something that is inherited and you cannot change for some reason, then you have to fight that separately. So if you have, for example, um, somebody wrote this, for example, then the only way to fight that is to fight it with something that has stronger specificity over here in the selector, but with still the same level of nukiness. <laughs> Hope that that's a word now. So it, you can still use important, but now you're fighting between the selectors, right? So that means that um, once you start, once anybody starts an important cascade, then everything from that point on will be fighting with importance and it is a huge mess later on. So uh, it's best to avoid important as much as you can, regardless of what the tutorials give you, because the two people who wrote the tutorials don't care about the CSS. They only care about having it work at that moment that you apply it on the website, which can be problematic later on. So um, you can't just copy paste it and then um, be happy about it because later on it might cause problems. So um, one thing to know about that is that important needs to be used uh, very um, carefully. Um, you can get in touch with, we, touch with me by um, emailing me at pk at almost inevitable.com. So that's, yeah, it's the easiest way to do that. Um, and if you wanna start writing your own CSS, you can, and you can see here that these, these things um, are not just one uh, class. You can see that over here, the footer and the blurb are stuck together. And then there's a space here between the blurb and the module header. And then there's a comma. You can add more selectors together with commas. So for example, custom class, comma, um, custom class two. And that means that this color red will be applied to two different um, classes. But if you have another one like this, custom div, then maybe I can make this, yeah, that's that's easier to read, right? So if you do that, then there's a space in between and that space means that, okay. Yeah, that space means that it is inside, it is nested. So if you look at this et blurb container is the parent div of et module header, right? So then if you wanna, if you wanna target the header, and if you need two classes in, in your selector, then you can use et blurb container space et blurb header, right? 
But in this case, module and then ETPB blurb, that means that they're on the same level. So you don't have a space, you have you are you put them together and they're separated only by that dot. So um, in this case, you can see it here, right? ETPB module, ET last child. They don't have a space in between. That means that they're on the same level. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's basically how you write selectors. And after that, Don't everything like is by the range of AI tool. The story about superior free. Yeah, I don't I, that I don't know why that's has anything to do with this right now. So we can talk about that later, I think. All right. Um, Jack, is that right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how you write uh, selectors and that's how you write and everything inside that are just um, here. That's just, uh, these rules are just done with uh, property and value. Um, and remember how we had um, custom properties. You can do something like that here. And we can maybe make it 20 pixels. And then now what we can do is adding variable um, custom property. And that will be 20 pixels. So later, if you need to, then you can change it to 10 and everything that uses this will also change to 10. So um, that's what that's what all that stuff down here is like this stuff is for. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's pretty much how that works. You can so you can actually do things here. I didn't I didn't target anything here, but um, you can actually do that here. Uh, and then once it's once you see what you like, then you can take that and paste it into the bottom of the Divi panel uh, in the theme op Divi options. There's a custom CSS panel there, so just drop it in there and reload it, and it should work. Um, it's better to do everything in one spot than throwing everything everywhere because later, e either when it's inherited or either when you are revisiting that build, it's better that everything is in one spot than everywhere and hunting and clicking on everything and getting frustrated and trying to override things with uh, important and then breaking things. So um, yeah, uh, all right, I think, I think that's, a lot of the things that I had prepared to explain. Um, the, a couple of things that I think I can, I can finish up with is that if you go to my website, almostinevitable.com, uh, you can, I'm gonna actually have to add that, but maybe in, an, in a few hours, um, there is gonna be a, a crash course. I, I think for this one, actually, uh, a crash course uh, PDF that I can add. Um, you can visit the site later, like in a tomorrow or to, to, I guess tomorrow, and visit the site and you'll find a PDF download and it will explain exactly what I sort of explained in terms of how to write CSS uh, in, a, in the most basic way. And um, somebody can somebody give me a word, any word? Random word, just clean, please. Clean. Toronto. Toronto. Okay, so um, put in Toronto and a number between 10 and 20. 13. 13. All right, because of Susie, it's only 13%. So, uh, <laughs> No, I don't know. 20%, 20%, 20, uh, Toronto 20. All right. <laughs> so um, uh, I'll have this open for like a month. So you can use that coupon code starting tomorrow. And for about a month, it'll be open. You can take, it'll take 20% off of anything, even if it, even if the course is on sale and um, there's a CSS course there as well. There's an SCSS, which is way higher level. Um, so you can sort of do any of that. Uh, at 20% off, Toronto 20 is the coupon code. It'll start working in a few hours. So yeah, uh, any questions that we can talk about? 
I just have one oh, yeah. thing, PK. Sorry. Yep. I love what you did, but and I when you were showing us the selectors, I know you were just kind of making up a fake class and a fake um, ID. But could right. you show us on any site? Um, go into the inspector, choose an item, change the background color, change the padding, maybe change two or three things within there so that we can actually see a real live. This is how I would change it to find the actual code. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, just, all right. So I just want to jump into and let people know we are taking a recording. So if anyone does have to leave, because I know we said an hour, um, there will be a recording that I will share. Um, but keep going, PK, because I'm loving it. So keep going. Okay, cool. So let's see. Uh, in this case, this has padding and all right. I, I would technically want to clean this up because it has 140% width. Um, it's better to have everything sit properly and not being forced to be pushed to a spot. Everything is better uh, if it is, you know, either smaller or at 100%. If it has to go wider, then there it can cause problems and there's layout things that you will have to deal with. And it seems like this is pushing these buttons out with these two numbers here, uh, the padding and the margin over there, but then um, this is also being pushed out because the original spot that this is supposed to be in is here. So um, there's a few things that I would like to clean up, but I, I, I won't do that right now. We'll just change the background and some colors and I'll show you how to pick up on that. So it's best if you wanna do something custom and this co later comes into becoming, um, to writing your own CSS framework. And if you keep doing this, and if you find yourself doing things over and over, then you can actually come up with your own framework, which is what I do when I write my SAS. Um, but you can, so in, in the module settings, you can go in and you can add a CSS, a class, right? So let's say, for example, let's make this um, uh, class, text red or text black. I don't know. The easiest thing that we can do, just change the text color. Uh, and maybe we can have um, background white, right? Now, the way that I write this, it's supposed to be normally in, in English, It'll be a white background and a black text, right? But the reason why I write it like this with the element in front is something that later when you start learning more CSS um, and styling, then it's a thing called BEM, which is block element modifier, right? So the type of thing, so larger into smaller details is BEM pretty much. Um, this is not necessarily BEM because you don't see three, but it is following the same approach with a block first and then the detailed thing later. Uh, and this is more important the more you go on because um, if you keep changing the first part, then it will become unruly. It, it, you lose a lot of context of what this does, uh, although it is against regular um, English rules, this is how things are coded normally. And you can see that everywhere in all these classes as well. So ETPB is the prefix for getting things only on Divi. So it won't clash with any other plugin. So that's unique. And then you have your module and then you have your blurb. And then underneath, after that, it's blurb one, whatever TB is, footer, and then text align left. Because normally you would have left aligned text, but you have text and then align left, which is the detailed modifier after that. So blur, position top, uh, layout, dark, same thing that we're, I'm doing here, text, black, background, white, okay? All right, so that's what I would normally start with because um, these classes, as you can see, are all very generic classes. They're not unique because if you wanna target one specific part, it's better that it's unique, right? Um, otherwise, if you wanna target the whole, whole site, then you, can, you could technically do like ETPB module, but that will affect all the modules. So you don't want to, you don't necessarily want that, right? So that's why we have text black and background white. And then after that, so I just did that in the inspector. It's not actually going to be on the website on, on the back end. So when I reload this, it's going to be gone, but we'll just work on this for now. 
Um, and you can skip content container unless you want to actually change things, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, and what we don't want to do is, well, what we, what we could do, but don't want to is, so text black and color black and um, background white. All right, so, you, oh, that worked. Yeah, because nothing nothing was affecting it before, so that just worked, as you can see, all right? Yeah, but you can see that the color is not being affected, right? So um, now we're gonna go and change, you can you could technically change everything, but let's, uh, let's not do that. Let's do um, H2 first. So you can see text black is here, H2 is, nested inside it is a child element so we're going to do that text, text black and that's what i mean by a space it's a it's nested inside so you have a space um it's the inspector is smart enough to pick up on that and try to suggest things for you we're actually going for h2 here so i'm just going to click that but don't rely on this just type it normally uh but yeah so here we go and in this case we can do color gray for no reason no um black does that work no because something else is overriding that and there you go it's a dumb important there so we're gonna have to actually fight that so if you look at that you see that there's one class that's that's one dot that's two dots that's three dots so what we need to do now is we need to fight that with three classes okay we already have one class here Right, and then we have one element, so that's not enough, right? Uh, so we have the header, and we'll have to use something else that's in that's in between, so or on the same level. So I'll take module, and I'll take uh, blurb content and module header. And that is three classes that we're going to pick up from the original structure. We can use generic ones now because we already have a specific one, and then we can. Um, that means that we'll have, we have already one class here. We add three, that gives us four classes that overrides what this guy is doing. And you can tell this is the one that is being applied to this important because, um, that is the lightest colored one, right? That, so that everything that we learned now makes sense, right? Hopefully. And if it doesn't, you have a recording. So, all right. So we're going to do a uh, module, which is on the same level as text black. And then we have content and header. So, um, PD module, and I won't put a space here because it's on the same level. And then underneath text black, there is a container and it's, it, it's on its own little thing. It's under text black, but it's on its own thing, right? So we're gonna put in PT PB container, right? And then uh, module header is on the same level as the H2. So ETPB module header. ETPB module header. All right, now it's all good. The only thing that's not working is that it has import here, which is why I'm, I've, I'm saying it's best to avoid using important, but we'll do that. And I think you also need, um, sorry, the word blurb before container, if I'm reading the code right. Yes. Okay. Very good. And this is realistically what it's like when you're editing CSS code, everybody. <laughs> yep. And then there's like one typo that you're missing. module header I thought I got it right ETPB module module yep. and now we can header. see the word new oh Zealand. yeah there you go yeah, it's yeah. There. yeah now the reason why I, we, I, I need important here is because somebody set important here and that means the only way to fight that is with a stronger selector with another important 
Um, if it if it didn't have that, if none of this, if it were if we're doing like font weight, then it wouldn't need that, right? So for example, font weight. Now we don't need important for this because as you can see here, this doesn't have important, so we don't need to fight it like that. All we need to do is just make it. Uh, was this? Yeah, let's make it seven hundred. So it's not a lot of difference here, but yeah. Oh, it's already 700, that's why. <laughs> All right, 400, there we go, right? And as you can see, you don't need important normally because the selectors are stronger than this one, right? So um, we took a three class selector and made it into a four class one element selector. The one element is not important because um, it's we have three classes, but if it's three classes and then another three classes, then you would you would need that element there, All right? So um, let me just show that we don't we're using the same three classes, same number of classes. So that's still three, one, two, three. But we have H two, which is only one little bit, the weakest element, but is still stronger than the three class no element selector, right? So that's why it comes on top. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's uh, what you can do. Now, another really cool trick that um, is probably useful when you're using uh, a modular class like this, which is which which can become like a framework, like I said, is the asterisk. And that is like that. That is Anything, so this means anything that is nested will be color black. And as long as there are not anything else that is controlling the colors or anything, then it will be applied uh, throughout everything that's in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think that sort of explains it pretty much, right? Hey, Andy, uh, my, my email is pk at almostinevitable.com. That's my website and just put PK at in front. That's me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does anybody need any more ex explanation? I think I think that sort of explains the general process, right? So after you do this, you can put this in your Divi options um, CSS field in the bottom, and it will look the same because you know it works. It loads there. And always, when you write new CSS, put it underneath each other. So keep adding below. And that is general general best practice. Does that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, any questions, anyone, for PK while we're wrapping up here about what we've done so far? No? I think we're good. Okay, so any last words, PK, that you want to share? Or I know you've already said how to find us and you're going to do that coupon code. I'll let you just do a quick wrap up, I guess. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, uh, CSS is great. <laughs> it's, it's, it really is, it, CSS connects uh, the developer with the designer. And if you know how to write CSS and add, little CSS tweaks even, then it can really take the way that you approach design to a new level. Um, but it only does, not only, but a lot, 99% of CSS is how it's presented. It doesn't change the functionality too much unless like things are overlapping, which is bad, but um, it, it sort of, it does what design is supposed to do. Um, so CSS can't do everything, but it can make everything look uh, way better if you wanted to. So um, it's really worth having uh, that skill for now or future, whatever it is. Um, and if you're working in this web design space, I guess it really is important. So um, have fun with that. I'm always available to answer questions. Like I said, pk at almostinevitable.com. Just reach out for anything and I'm happy to help. And um, thanks for having me and um, I'll see you guys around. All right. Thank you so much, PK. I just want to do a shout out too that he also does have 
um, paid courses, but there is also a free course, Practical CSS for Beginners, where he does go into um, this type of context, but a little more detail and um, a little longer. If you guys want to check it out and do it at your own pace, that's definitely something to um, look into. Uh, CSS is something that will change your world, and the more you get into it, the more you learn, and the more you inspect other people's code, the more you learn what can be done. I learned a lot of my CSS literally just by going into that inspector and seeing how things work. So don't be afraid to check it out. And everything you do within the inspector doesn't break your site. Once you hit reload, it's gone. It's done. It's you haven't broke anything, but you can. Well, that means you need to save it, everyone. Yes. So always save it when you are editing because you're going to figure out how to fix something and then reload the page and you're going to go, ah, where did it go? So be sure that you copy and paste it like PK said. So a huge thank yep. you so much, PK. for uh, Thank you, PK, for sharing with us today. I'm going to go ahead and stop the share. Thank you, everyone.